Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top 10 legendary weapons manufactured by Jacobs in Borderlands 3. It has arrived. The good old fashioned guns that don't mess around with any bells or whistles, just what they need to get the job done. If it took more than one shot, you were probably using the Fakers. Today it's the guns that may look plain, but are far from it, and I'll be letting you know who has an increased chance to drop them, what they do, and how you can use them to their full potential. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, and if you're enjoying the content and you're not subscribed, hitting that sub button really helps out. Make sure to let me know what weapon brand we should cover next, and what Jacob's weapon you rely on the most, and let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 10 legendary Jacob's weapons with the Monocle, the first sniper rifle in this countdown which has an increased chance to drop from the demo Skaggins you fight around here in the droughts. The Monocle is the most true to life sniper rifle you can come across in Borderlands 3, and for that it should be commended. It always comes equipped with a large magnification scope and it encourages you to use it. That's because while aiming, critical hits will deal about 3.5 times more damage than a regular shot. Following its design will have you one-shotting enemies in all that high definition glory, and its bullets will rip up their insides. It's perhaps best with a 390 anointment, although you rad and consecutive hits will serve you well too. At number 9 is the Trickshot, a pistol exclusive to Arms Race, which can drop anywhere there with a higher chance to drop from this chest. The Trickshot is a gun that rewards you well not only when hitting crits, but when hitting any shot in general. That's because it comes with a unique firing cylinder that expends the remainder of its magazine after each successful shot. It's a great effect that practically turns it into a sniper rifle as its magazine's worth of damage is railed off in quick fire time. All you have to do is get that first shot placed correctly and the rest will fall into place. Although on the surface it's semi-automatic, accurate players will never share that sentiment as they can transform it into a fully auto machine. Next up, the Wedding Invitation, a sniper rifle exclusive to the Broken Hearts Day event, and unfortunately is limited to only coming with base game anointments. The Wedding Invitation is one of the few Jacob's weapons that can come in an element, always firing flaming hot rounds. Critical hits with it are deadly, causing a fiery explosion that will knock back your enemies, and it will also cause a freezing projectile to ricochet into an unwary opponent. On top of the devastating criticals it can cause, it also returns a bullet to your magazine every time you land one, making it possible to fire forever. That's a big plus, especially considering that like the monocle, each bullet needs to be loaded individually. When it launched last year, it was fantastic, but a lot has changed since then, and it isn't as good now comparatively, but it will still get the job done, especially against flesh targets. At number 7, another sniper rifle, and this is the Unseen Threat, an elite sniper from DLC 2, which can only be dropped from a march you fight around in this area of Curse Haven. The Unseen Threat is a gun that lives up to its name, your enemies don't even know what's coming before it's too late. A single shot from its barrel deals good damage, but it's the three homing projectiles that bring its damage up to the max. That unique effect is a great incentive to hit crits, especially because the homing projectiles aren't limited to the targeting of other enemies, but can also seek out the original target. That makes it a great bossing sniper, where one shot can really do some damage. Now for the Lucky 7, a unique pistol that can't come in an element and has an increased chance to drop from Pandora's toughest Autobot, and that's Scraptrap Prime, who you fight around here in the compactor. The Lucky 7 is at first just a standard Jacob's pistol, that is until you reload, and a bounty of riches is revealed. It's not called the Lucky 7 for nothing, as there's about a 20% chance for one of its 5 possible bonuses to be applied upon reload. 
Those bonuses include explosive rounds, fully auto, always critical ricocheting amp shots, elemental type, and seven pellets. Each one increases its DPS, but seven pellets will provide the largest buff. If you're Moe's, that's the one you'll want, coupled with explosive rounds, which when combined with means of destruction, will have you riding the peak of its power forever, or at least until you change guns. The Robin's Call finds itself halfway through in 5th place, this time a shotgun, which is exclusive to DLC 3 with an increased chance to drop from Garrett and Locke, you fight here in Ashfall Peaks. The Robin's Call is a pump shotgun with a high pallet count that fires off rounds in a 2 shot burst. That pallet count ranges from 9 to 16, with each one consuming the same 4 ammo per shot, so the more pallets, the better. You may think 4 ammo per shot is high, and it is, but because it's a call cool gun, those bullets go straight back to your magazine on any critical hits. That unique effect and high pallet count make it a great choice shotgun on flak. You can fire off blow after blow of damaging buckshot rounds. At number 4 is the Maggie, a loyal multi palleted pistol that has an increased chance to drop from Turnkey Tim. You can find around here in Floodmore Basin. The Maggie is a gun that continues to deliver and still is yet to get the credit it deserves. Each of its buckshot rounds is packed with 6 pallets and it has a few extra bullets in its magazine than a standard Jacobs pistol. Because of its multi palleted nature, ricochets are especially deadly, as each pallet will rebound into unsuspecting targets. It's consistently been in the top tier of Borderlands weapons and still remains there today, getting the job done quickly with no fuss at all against any of your opposition. At number 3 is the Clairvoyance, a DLC 2 assault rifle that can only come in cryo, and can only be found by defeating Critchy, who you fight here in Curse Haven. The Clairvoyance comes in 3 distinct variants, which each share a commonality of high firepower. A standard variant is semi-automatic, but you can get it in fully auto, or even multi palleted with a masher prefix. The masher version has the highest single shot damage, perfect for flak and Zane players can make great use of a fully automatic one. It takes a leaf out of the Torg book when it comes to handling explosives, rewarding you even more for any critical hit. When you land one, a sticky bomb will attach itself to your enemy and ricochet projectiles as they explode. The great thing about its unique effect is that landing multiple criticals in a short space of time will cause them to explode in unison, dealing mountains of damage. There's something poetic about it as you can use it to freeze your enemy solid before the upcoming explosion shatters their icy tomb. In second place is the Skull Masher, a devastating sniper rifle that again belongs in DLC 2, with an increased chance to drop from S to the Invincible as part of the Wee Slash questline. And you can find them around here in Skidamore Basin. The Skull Masher is lethal, popping heads clean off with a single shot. Like the Maggie, it's multi palleted which not only increases its damage, but also helps to proc abilities with more efficiency. Although it is a single shot sniper, you can rail off shots incredibly fast, with tap after tap crushing the souls of your enemies. If you ever wanted a sniper rifle that feels incredibly good, and puts all of its power into each bullet, then you've found it right here, with the Skull Masher. Before number 1 is revealed, let's cover some honourable mentions, the first one being the calls. King's and Queen's call to be in fact. They only drop from Tyrene the Destroyer, but you fight in Destroyer's Rift. The guns are functionally identical, but spawn with different elements. The King's call can come in Incendiary and Shock, whereas the Queen's call can only come in Corrosive, Radiation and Cryo. Like other guns with call in their name, like the Robin's Call, the Queen's and King's Call return bullets to your magazine on critical hits, and they both consume 3 ammo per shot. If you're not hitting criticals with them, then you may call them lackluster, but when you do, they can tear it up. It's a great gun on Fadeaway Flak, who doesn't need to worry too much about aiming, or for any player who can land consecutive critical hits. 
The next honorable mention I have is the Companion and Incendiary, only Jacob's Pistol that has an increased chance to drop from Anointed X2 or 3. You fight here in the Anvil as part of the Malevolent Practice quest. I consider the Companion the Howlwalker's little brother. He can't quite grow a beard, but he sure can grow a moustache. It's a revolver with a large magazine which will ignite enemies on any critical hit. It doesn't quite have the power to quickly cut through armour or shields, but whenever an enemy's flank is exposed, it'll make quick work of them for sure. The last honourable mention I have is the Stone Thrower, a DLC 3 non-elemental Jacob's Rifle, which can only be dropped by Cormarch, who you fight around here in Ashfall Peaks. The Stone Thrower isn't your typical Jacob's weapon, it doesn't care if you get a critical hit or not, it'll ricochet projectiles regardless. It deals high damage, especially on critical hits, and like the clairvoyance, typically comes semi-automatic, but you can also get a Gatlin version which is fully automatic as well, like the one I'm using here. Although often outshined by the clairvoyance, it is a good gun and will work well on all Vault Hunters, particularly on a Ricochet Amara who can up the already high amount of ricocheting projectiles, and thus making it good for mobbing. Look who we have here, it's number one, and wearing the medal today, it's the Howlwalker, a trailblazing shotgun that can only come in fire, and has an increased chance to drop from Road Dog, who you fight around here in the Splinterlands. The Howlwalker is a shotgun that deals incredibly high damage, firing off 10 searing pellets which burn through your opponents. It's incredibly good at dealing with flesh targets, and its high base damage make it very capable against other health bars too. Generally, it will only fire the one shot before you have to reload, but you can buff its mag size to fire off both barrels, or sometimes even more. Its stats are the same across the board, so you will only be farming anointments, with the best one being consecutive hits or URAD. No matter who you play as, with one of those in your arsenal, you can banish your enemies to the Shadow Realm with a hail of blazing glory. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 legendary Jacob's weapons in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.